again, liberty-minded friends. Today I'm continuing my discussion on Section 230. Over the last few years, everyone's been talking about big tech, how we need to break up or regulate big tech. So it's not surprising that Republicans and Democrats have introduced dozens of bills to reform, repeal, or rewrite Section 230. Today I'm discussing all the scary ways Congress wants to reform Section 230. I've read through every single one of the bills being proposed right now for myself and I've written a description of each. You can find all of that on my blog and I encourage you to read through them for yourself. I will leave a link to that in the description. I personally think every single one of these bills is a bad idea, but I'd really love to hear your thoughts. The scary bills being proposed range from repealing Section 230 to adding exceptions, restrictions, and new regulations. Most of the Republican bills are aimed at stopping the censoring. Senator Lindsey Graham and Representative Louis Gohmert both have introduced bills that would repeal Section 230. Most of the other stop the censoring bills want to remove Section 230's immunity so that social media companies have to allow everyone the ability to post any material that is protected under the Constitution. But some of them want to take it a step further and allow users to sue social media platforms if their First Amendment rights are violated. The Curbing Abuse and Saving Expression and Technology Act, or CASET Act, is one I find particularly scary. It was written to protect minors from obscene and sexually exploitive content. It adds a number of exceptions to Section 230 protections. Platforms would not be eligible for Section 230 immunity if they allow or facilitate content that is illegal, explicit content between an adult and a minor, or any content that is exploitive, indecent, obscene, or harmful to minors. If an interactive computer service facilitates any of these exceptions, it will lose its protection under Section 230 for a period of one year. But it also adds an exception for stifling free speech. And it says if a platform is dominant in its market and it makes a content moderation decision that isn't reasonably consistent with the First Amendment, the publisher can be sued for up to $500,000. And that's what I find scary. If anyone can sue a social media platform because they feel their First Amendment right to free speech has been violated, I'm not sure how any of the big technology companies will be sustainable. But this is just one of many bills that allow for people to sue social media platforms if they feel their free speech rights under the Constitution have been violated. There are a number of other bills that want to require social media platforms to have a publicly available terms of service. Now most of these social media platforms already have a publicly available terms of service, but these bills want to make these terms of service work like a contract and the terms of service would be required to spell out specifically what would violate terms of service. They would also be required to notify users immediately if a post was removed for violating terms of service and explain to them in factual details why it was removed or why they were blocked from the platform. They also want to require these platforms to allow users to appeal these decisions and they want to allow users to be able to sue social media platforms if they breach their contract with their terms of service. I see this as being extremely problematic because interpreting whether or not a violation happens or not happens or if this is a breach of contract or not a breach of contract is going to be a lot of work and problems and create a lot of extra financial burdens on these social media platforms. So I'm not crazy about this bill at all and I think it's ridiculous that we need to have Congress determine what's fair and not fair on social media platforms. 
There are also a few bills that are trying to regulate how social media platforms use their algorithms. One of them is called the Protecting Americans from Dangerous Algorithms Act, and the bill hopes to hold large social media platforms accountable for violence that's occurring offline. And it would limit interactive computer services immunity if it uses an algorithm to rank, order, promote, recommend, or amplify content. Now, this issue of algorithms promoting dangerous content is also going to be discussed in the upcoming Supreme Court of Gonzalez versus Google. But this might sound like a great idea to some people, but it's going to have a big effect on anyone who uses a search engine or a social media platform to rank their content. And it's going to change how all of these platforms work if the government starts regulating how the algorithms work. It will have an indirect effect on anyone in the social media search engine or content creation industry. Perhaps the scariest bill being introduced is the See Something, Say Something Online Act. This bill was introduced by Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, and it essentially requires social media platforms to scan their users' content for suspicious activity. If they see something suspicious, such as a violent crime, act of terrorism, or a drug offense, they would be required by law to report it to the Department of Justice. If they failed to do so, they could be held liable for the content that was posted. Another bill that's been introduced is the Federal Big Tech Tort Act. This bill's purpose is to protect teens from the harmful content they view on social media. A spokesperson for the bill said that, like Big Tobacco before it, Big Tech pushes products it knows are harmful. This bill allows an individual under the age of 16 who suffers bodily injury or harm to mental health from their use of social media to file a civil action against the company. The companies would have to provide evidence that they took action to ensure that their users of their website were 16 years or older and if they could not prove that, they could be sued and held liable for damages or punitive damages for causing bodily injury or harm to the mental health of someone under the age of 16. As you can see, there are a number of bills in Congress right now aimed at regulating big tech. The last one I want to mention is the Health Misinformation Act of 2021. This bill cites numerous references to the dangerous misinformation that proliferated the internet during the COVID pandemic. In fact, most of this bill is references to misinformation that happened during the COVID pandemic. This bill would allow interactive service providers to be treated as the publisher or speaker of third-party content if their algorithm promotes or amplifies health misinformation during a publicly declared health emergency. I'm sure you can understand why this piece of legislation could be scary. I did not discuss every scary Section 230 bill in detail in this video, but I do have a comprehensive list of all the Section 230 bills in Congress right now on my website, and I'm leaving a link to that in the description. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about one more Section 230 case, the Gonzalez versus Google case that will be going to the Supreme Court very soon. And it could change how Section 230 is interpreted or it could repeal Section 230 altogether. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. And then on Friday, I'm going to be talking about my favorite libertarian. So stay tuned for that. If you've watched this all the way to the end, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm working really hard on creating content here more consistently so that I can spread the message of liberty. There are not enough content creators in the libertarian community, and I'm trying to be one of them. So I appreciate all of you who stayed tuned and who are supporting me. I'll have more content next week, but if you want to follow me and help me spread my reach, please click the like button on this and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next week with more Liberty content.